Okay, let's talk about radial and angular nodes. So the idea is pretty much that when you're looking at an atom, the very first orbital that an atom will have will be completely spherical and it will contain no nodes whatsoever. And in essence, this particular orbital is the most stable out of all of the rest. And another way to put this is to say that the total number of nodes present in an atom is going to be given by the energy level in which the electron is located, minus 1. And the reason for the minus 1 is that the very first orbital present will contain no angular or radial nodes. Now, the total number of nodes itself is the combination of radial nodes and angular nodes. So we could use this relationship to find out a derivation for the number of radial nodes themselves. And that will simply be the principal quantum number minus the angular quantum number minus 1. So for instance, if we look at the 1s orbital, we know that the value of n equals 1, and we know that the value of l has to equal 0 because s orbitals have a value of l equal to 0. So Plugging the numbers into the equation here, we have n equals 1, l equals 0, so we have 1 minus 0 minus 1, which equals 0. And this says that a 1s orbital, which is the very first orbital that an atom can have, contains no angular and no radial nodes. This is the orbital that is fully symmetrical and spherical in shape. But when we move on to higher orbitals, like the 2s orbital, well, the value of n is now 2, the value of L continues to be zero since we're talking about an S orbital, but plugging this into the equation yields a value of two minus zero minus one, or in other words, one for the radial nodes. Continuing the series onto the two P orbitals, we have a value of two for N, but the value of L is now one because we're now dealing with the P orbitals. And substituting these numbers into the equation, 2 minus 1 minus 1, tells us that there is no radial nodes for the 2p orbital. Um, with that being said, notice that for the second energy level, we have a total of one node. But the difference is that the s orbital has a radial node, whereas the p orbital has an angular node. But altogether, there is one node present at the second energy level. The third energy level, which is higher in energy, um, as you'll find out, will contain even an additional uh, node present. And since this is the third energy level, n equals 3. For the s orbital, l equals 0. So plugging those two numbers into the equation up here will yield the result that r equals to 2. And this means that the 3s orbital has two angular nodes, excuse me, two radial nodes present within it. Moving on to the 3p orbital, we know that n has to equal 3. The p orbital has to have an l value equal to 1, and 3 minus 1 minus 1 tells us that r must equal 1. And what this is saying now is that the 3p orbital contains not only one angular node, but it also contains one radial node. And the 3d, which is the additional orbital present at the third energy level, tells us that l equals to 2. So 3 minus 2 minus 1 yields a value of 0 for the radial node. And if you concentrate on the three orbitals present at the third energy level, what you can see is that at every instance, you have a total number of two nodes present. In some instances, like the 3s orbital, all of the nodes are radial. In the case of the 3d orbitals, all of the nodes are angular. And for the p orbitals, we have basically half and half radial and angular nodes present. Now for the four energy level, if we look at the 4p, now I'm jumping a little bit, uh, the value of n equals 4, the value of l equals 1, since we're dealing with a p orbital, 4 minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 2. So we have two radial nodes and one angular node. And another thing to notice is that the energy level is 4, but the total number of nodes is 3. In other words, total number of nodes equals n minus 1. Okay, the 4d, same idea. We have a value of 4 for n, and since this is a d orbital, the value of l equals 2. 4 minus 2 minus 1 yields a value of 1 for the radial node. Okay, so 5d. That means that the number of n is equal to 5. The value associated with d is equal to 2. 
for L, and 5 minus 2 minus 1 equals 2. So that tells us that at the fifth energy level, we have two radial nodes and two angular nodes for the d orbital, and together there's a total of four nodes present at the fifth energy level. Alright, now what I'm going to show you is how you draw these particular orbitals accounting for the presence of the radial node. And after that, I'll show you, you know, how to do it uh, by hand. Because the first time you see this, it may look a little bit esoteric. So, you know, hopefully you won't be <laughs> taken aback by this. But all right, let's take a look at the 1s, or excuse me, the s orbitals. And we'll look at the 1s, the 2s, and the 3s. And we can see that the progression of the radial nodes is that you start with no radial nodes and you increase the number by 1 as you go into higher energy levels. So the 1s orbital, which has no radial nodes, simply looks like a sphere. This is the typical shape of the s orbital, and traditionally this is how you represent it when dealing with explanations of orbitals. But when you move to the 2s, now you have one radial node present, and technically what happens is that you still have this spherical shape, but the orbital is kind of broken into parts, and the number of radial nodes basically tells you um, how many times you're going to be breaking up the particular orbital. So what ends up happening is that for the 2s orbital, you have this region here which is shaded in the center. That's the first part of the orbital. And then you have this segmented line which represents the, um, the node itself. And after the node, you reestablish the cylindrical portion of this sphere. So notice that here we have two solid lines. That's because you, what you're really drawing here is a ring. A ring that represents the remaining part of the 2s orbital. Now the second thing to notice is that because the first portion of the orbital is shaded, the portion that follows after the node is going to be unshaded. In a similar fashion, looking at the 3s orbital where we have two radial nodes, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We start with the spherical core, we go through a node, we draw the two rings, and then we have to draw yet an additional node for which thereafter we draw two extra rings, which now change in shading. So look at this. We start with a shaded region, move on to an unshaded region, and end up with yet another shaded region. So this alternation between shading and unshading is a prerequisite every time that you go through a node. And right now this may look kind of difficult to kind of grab your mind around and grasp your mind around because you know it looks a little bit crazy um, so I'll show you in a little bit how to do it by hand but before we do that let's move on to the p orbitals and show the, the entire picture now for the p orbitals we start at the second energy level and for those particular p orbitals there is zero um, there's zero radial nodes the 3p and the 4p have progressively um, one more or one additional radial node present so what you do is, for the 2p orbital, you draw the typical shape, you have your um, damp shell shape, and one of the lobes is shaded, the other one's unshaded, and technically you have your angular nodes right in the middle. Alright, so if you move on to the higher energy level p orbitals, where you start having uh, radial nodes present, what you basically do is draw what I like to call macaronis. Okay? <laughs> These macaronis basically represent um, the additional portion of the orbital, uh, now including a node. So this empty space in between the macaroni and the original p orbital is the node itself. So this is the radial node. And then this thing here horizontally is the angular node of the p orbital. Um, the second thing to notice is that once again, since we're going past a node, the shading of the orbitals changes. This starts as being shaded, ends up being unshaded. The orbital down here is unshaded. And by the time you go past the node, now it's shaded. And if we move on to the 4p orbital, the same idea ensues, namely that you're going to build, you know, macaroni after macaroni until you go past, you know, the correct number of nodes. So another way to look at this is that if you draw the original p orbital, the number of macaronis that you draw for every low present represents the number of nodes you've gone through. So having a radial node of 2 for the 4p orbital means that we're going to draw one macaroni and another macaroni. For the upper lobe one macaroni and a second macaroni for the lower lobe and much like in the previous examples if the original lobe is shaded 
the next macaroni is going to be unshaded. And if we have to draw further macaronis, the next macaroni will have to be shaded. Same thing here. Unshaded goes to shaded, goes back to unshaded. And the story also repeats itself for the d orbitals. Um, we start with d orbitals at the third energy level. Those are the ones that do not have any radial nodes. And then we progressively increase the number of radial nodes as we go into higher energy levels. So here you can pick any of the different 3D orbitals to do the drawing. I'm going to pick the one right here. Uh, technically the D, uh, believe this is the DXC orbital. All right, so if we move on to the 4D orbital where we have one radial node, all you have to do is draw macaronis for every lobe that the D orbital contains. And you just have to remember to alternate the shading. Wherever there is shade, the macaroni has to be unshaded. Wherever there is unshaded regions, the macaroni has to have a shaded um, region itself. And moving on to the 5D, we basically have four radial nodes, excuse me, two radial nodes. So we basically draw two sets of macaronis for every single lobe that the D orbital contains. And we just make sure that we alternate the shading as we move outwardly further and further out. All right, now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually draw these things by hand. And uh, hopefully this will make a little bit more sense, but this is more or less the graphical representation of the orbitals, including the radial nodes.